here to read you one of my all-time favorite stories. It's called Carolinda Clatter, and it's written and illustrated by Mordecai Gerstein. It's published by Roaring Burke Press. Years ago, Mordecai came into our school and did an author presentation, and he also signed this book. So I really treasure that, having known Mordecai and having had this copy of the book um, signed by him. Mordecai has since passed away, sadly, but we still have this book and all of his wonderful, wonderful stories to, to treasure and to read over and over again. I feel really lucky today because my friend Beth Besser is accompanying me by adding the musical component to this story. She wrote us a, a, a song to go right along with this book. So let's get started. Carolinda Clatter by Mordecai Gerstein. This is a story about a giant. Once there was a lonely giant who fell in love with the moon. He was the very last giant and there was no one else large enough for him to love. Dear moon, he sang. Dear moon, he sang, come and dance with me. Dear moon, Have a lovely family of little giants, planets, and comets. But the moon just shone coldly and silently and said nothing. For five thousand years, the giant sang and danced for her. He begged and pleaded with her. But the moon just sailed across the sky, waxing and waning waning and waxing and said nothing. The giant lay down, looked up at her, and for 10,000 years he raged and he wailed. He moaned and he wept. <laughs> Finally he fell asleep and even as he slept he wept. Over a hundred years, all around him. After 10,000 years, his eyes became ponds, his tears became waterfalls. His beard and the hair on his head became forests. All kinds of animals came to live on him. So Mordecai, when he came to our school, he told us about the time he went to France on a bicycle trip. And as he was pedaling along and looking up at the mountains, he saw these beautiful vistas. And he, his mind started um, imagining what that vista looked like. He thought it looked like a giant. And that's how he got the idea for this story. I wonder if you could look up at the Mount Tom range or another mountain range, maybe the Pomeroy mountain range and do the same. Think of a story about what that was. Maybe it was a giant. Maybe it was something else. It's amazing the directions our minds can go in when we let our imagination just go. And if you want to go a little wild with your imagination, then after this story, click on Mrs. Mara's link. She's going to show you how to create your own sleeping giant. After a hundred thousand years, people came. They said, this mountain looks just like a sleeping giant. We must be quiet and careful never to wake him. So they walked on tiptoe and whispered, and they quietly built a town right on the spot that looked like the giant's belly. The town was called Puppicton. It's kind of a funny name, Puppicton. Can you say that? And this is what it looked like when the first settlers came. 
over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, the legend grew about how the mountain was a sleeping giant hopelessly in love with the moon. And if he was ever awakened, his rage and grief would destroy the town. And so just in case the legend was true, no one ever made any noise. Puppington was a very quiet place. Babies didn't cry and children were afraid to scream and yell because everyone said, shh, you'll wake the giant. Shh, Do that you'll wake me. the giant. Shh, you'll wake the giant. Shh, you'll wake the giant. No one laughed. No one wept. You couldn't tell if they were happy or sad. No one sang. There was no music. No one even sneezed. The animals were quiet too. There were no moos, no barks, no twitters or chirps. The only sounds were whispers and the purring of cats. Then one night, Carolyn the Clatter was born. She was born noisy. Carolinda tried to be quiet, but the bigger she grew, the louder she got. She cried, she laughed, and she sang all the time. Shh, said everyone, you'll wake the giant. Shh, you'll wake the giant. But Carolinda just laughed and banged on pots and pans for good measure. The people of Puppeton hid under their beds and lived in fear. Shh. to wake the giant. I can't help it, she said. I just love noise. Here in Carolinda, birds began to chirp. Cows began to moo. Dogs barked and cats <coughs> Sure enough, one morning, the ground began to tremble. The people heard a low rumble. The rumble became a grumble. And the grumble became a tumble of words so low and loud and old and rusty that everyone knew it could only be one thing. And they were terrified. Now you've done it. You've woke the giant. You must go and tell him to go back to sleep. Oh dear, said Carolinda, must I? Yes, you must, said the people. Trembling in fear, Carolinda went up the hill called Giant's Chest into a tangled forest called Giant's Beard, up to the mouth, a huge dark cave full of moans and sighs. Singing made her feel a little less frightened, but just a little. Waterfalls ran down both sides of a peak called the nose, from ponds called the eyes. Excuse me, Mr. Giant, sir. I am Carolinda. It was I who woke you up. Is it you? Rumbled the voice who sings the beautiful songs and makes the beautiful music. It's just noise, said Carolinda, but it's what I love to do. It's music, said the giant. I haven't heard music for thousands and thousands of years. Oh, it makes me happy. It makes me want to get up and dance with the moon. I'm in love with her, you know, but she won't have me. Mr. Giant, sir, said Carolinda. My name is Hugh I want to dance. The giant tried to rise and the whole world shook. 
Mr. Eugene Giant, sir, said Carolinda. Many animals, birds, and people are living on you. They need you and love you. You are a mountain now, and mountains do not dance. The giant was silent for a long moment. Am I really a mountain? Am I truly loved? Yes, said Carolinda, and when the moon is full, she shines down on you all silvery. Do you think, asked the giant, that maybe now the moon likes me? I believe that she loves you, said Carolinda. Ah, said the giant, I almost gave up hope. I will lie here and adore her, and I will be a great mountain. But, Carolinda, please, every evening, would you sing me a song? A sweet, happy song? A soft, soothing song? Carolinda agreed and sang a lullaby. The giant yawned an enormous mountain song and fell into a deep, deep sleep. <sighs> Never to be broken again. Carolinda went back to town and told all that had happened. Are we safe now? Everyone whispered. Yes, said Carolinda. It was a long, deep sigh of relief. Then there were giggles. Then there was laughter and shouting and cheering and applause. Hooray for Carolinda! Then, Carolinda gathered everybody together and taught them how to sing. Every evening, they went up to the mountain and sang a lullaby to the giant. Then they laughed and danced into the night. Carolinda grew up, and she and all her children, their children's 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 children, were famous for their singing. Now visitors come from all over the world, to hear the music of the people of Puppington. Their music makes everyone laugh and cry and cheer. It makes everyone happy. Even the giant of the mountain, sleeping on and on, happily dreams that he's dancing. There once was a lonely giant fell in love with the moon he was the very last giant who waited for her love to bloom he danced and he sang underneath her sky and asked her to be his wife but the moon just sailed across the sky waxing and waning waning and waxing and for five thousand years the giant sang and danced he begged and he pleaded oh lovely moon please give me a chance dear moon he said come and dance with me dear moon he said please please marry me we'll have a lovely family of little giants, planets, and comets. The giant laid down and looked up at her for 10,000 years. His eyes became palms, his tears waterfall, his hair and his beard grew and grew and grew and grew until a forest appeared but the moon just sailed across the sky waxing and waning waning and waxing after a hundred thousand years or so the legend of the giant was told dear moon he said come and dance with me dear moon Please marry me. We'll have.
have a lovely family of little giants, planets, and comets.